in a follow-up to my latest video highlighting the bull case outlook on one of my favorite companies, Neo, I wanted to present both sides to the story, take off the horse blinders, put that wide-angle lens on to analyze the bear case outlook. Now, I will start off by saying that I am invested in Neo. I believe in their core business fundamentals. However, I think a healthy dose of criticism and critique is necessary for smart investment strategies. In this video, I want to highlight some concerns I have with the company and where I think Neo can improve to help my subscribers gain a clear, full picture. Stonks, unfortunately, don't only go up, folks. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I do a ton of videos like this highlighting IPOs, growth stocks, EV stocks, tech stocks. You don't want to miss out on any of that. While you're down there, smash that like button. I'd really appreciate it. Helps out so much with that old YouTube algorithm. All right, enough blabbering. Let's get right into it. The outline for this video will start with a wide angle macro scale and we'll work our way all the way down to the micro scale. So just like in the bull case outlook, when analyzing a company before considering their numbers or production or debt financing, what is the most important thing the company needs? The answer is clear, a functioning and circulating economy. The economy is the core fundamental that every single business relies on. Without an economy, without people working, going to their jobs, making income, the economy and buying power of people screeches to a halt. With the health situation ripping across the globe, fears of a slowing economy heading into the winter months and Q4 this year are of major concerns for many companies who rely solely on discretionary spending. Luxury vehicles are definitely an industry that takes a hit every single time there is a downturn in the overall markets and the wider economy. When push comes to shove, people can go without having their new, slick, eco-friendly vehicles as food, shelter, and water take precedent. We saw the slowing economy ripple through the auto industry in February and March this year, and even a large larger toll on the EV industry within the automobile sector in general. Electric vehicles typically cost more than conventional combustion engine vehicles, and therefore people will favor a lower costing vehicle over an environmentally friendly vehicle when incomes tighten. As fears surmount that in the coming months restrictions on workplaces, outings, and further lockdowns could shutter the economy, EV companies would surely take the brunt of this hit. Now, on a brighter note, we have seen increased delivery numbers coming out of mainland China from the NEO camp, and China as a whole has taken a hard stance and dominating approach to dealing with the health situation, which seems to be aiding in the short-term economic recovery. However, there may be longer-term ramifications to NEO's expansion into Europe, US, and the other dominant markets in the coming years. Now, although I do think the economic recovery will play a role in NEO's business operations in the coming few quarters, I do not think this will bring them to their knees in any sort of real manner. They are in a relatively healthy position currently, they have the support of the Chinese government, and they have plenty of cash and cash equivalents on hand to survive the short to medium term. I think in the long-term horizon that the short-term market hit will not play a big role into NEO's business business as this economic slowdown is based purely on an event and not a wider scale problem with the economy at large, like we saw in the 2008 recession. Slowing growth. Moving into the EV market, are people being persuaded to spend a little extra and turn to a green electric vehicle? While the answer is yes, we have seen a significant slowdown in growth in people purchasing electric vehicles in mainland China. China has recently undergone a slowing growth of auto sales in the past two years. This has bled over to a slowing growth in EV sales in China and a decrease in overall proportion of worldwide electric vehicle sales. Just a few years ago, China had almost 60% of total EVs and now this is under 50%. Now, this may also be due to the rapid acceleration of EVs within Europe, who have had a 44% increase in EV sales just last year alone. In 2017-18, China had a 79% increase in electric vehicle growth, followed by an absolutely dismal 3% in 2018-19. This may be due to cutbacks in the subsidy programs in mainland China. We also saw a negative 12% electric vehicle growth in the US, which followed an 80% growth just the previous year. Is this slowing growth in the United States? states a concern? Will China follow in the state's path with negative growth? China saw this slowing growth, is currently feeling the pressure from local governments on the devastating effects of pollution and smog, the toll it's taken on healthcare, and realizing that they can save money in the long term by switching to a system that lowers pollution impacts in the short term. Because of this, they have implemented subsidy programs to continue until the start of 2023, which should help flock consumers to electric vehicle companies in the short term. I am personally hoping that countries realize that electric is definitely the way of the future and it is economically beneficial to implement subsidy programs in the short term until electric vehicles are really the fundamental vehicle on the road. Dilution concerns. 
Although growth companies performing share dilutions is a very normal fact for companies on the path to financial success and profitability, NEO's frequent share dilutions do present some short-term concerns. NEO is converting bonds in order to produce capital for further spending. There could be more than 11% further dilution approaching, summated via Li Bin, the CEO and founder of NEO, the local authorities within Hefei province, and Tencent's convertible bonds. This would likely result in a much reduced share price in the coming months. You as a shareholder could look at this in two different ways. On one hand, if you are a short-term investor, you could profit take if you are up and get out before the additional dilution occurs as this will surely result in a short-term dipped share price. On the other hand, you could buy additional shares at this reduced share price when in fact the share dilution does occur. The difference between these two things essentially relies on your own investment strategy and what you think about NEO as a company and where they are headed in the long term. There is a lot of short-term volatility and noise that really shakes growth stocks, but when you zoom out on the grand scheme of things, this week-to-week volatility is dimmed down. I am personally solely a long-term investor. I don't think I've ever made a short or medium-term trade, so I try to focus on the big picture while keeping a very close eye on the short-term picture in order to best know when to buy additional shares and to ensure the company I am invested in is heading in the right track. There are also around 70 million additional shares that can be converted in 2024, which would dilute the pre-existing shares by more than 5% summating to a total of 16% total dilution. Now, although dilution is not a clear, cut and dry, all round negative prospect for investors, it's definitely not great news. Pre-existing shares are essentially just worth less. Just like when the Fed pumps more money into the economy, every pre-existing dollar is immediately worth less due to a supply and demand tug of war. Inflation occurs and worth is decreased. The same thing is happening to NEO shares when bonds are converted, resulting in dilution. These bondholders originally lent the company capital and they are now reaping the rewards for their investment at the expense of common stock shareholders. No additional funds are being injected into the company, so cash and cash equivalents the company owns takes a hit. If you go back and review the dates that NEO stock dilution occurred, you can quickly see a trend emerge. This trend is a sharp dip in price. Case in point, February 2nd, NEO announces private placement of $100 million USD short-term convertible bonds. Shares fell 6.6% in one day. June 9th, NEO releases a proposed offering of 60 million shares resulting in dilution. Shares fall about 12% in the preceding two days. August 27th, NEO releases proposed offering of 75 million shares resulting in dilution. Shares fall about 7% in one day alone. However, what do we see every single time after these dip days? We see a sharp increase in price. So what is happening here is that the pre-existing shareholders and short-term investors are running for the doors every time negative press is being released and then buyers are buying back in at a sale price. The latter of these two has been my NEO investment strategy for quite some time now, keeping my average share price as low as possible. Every Every single time negative press is released, I essentially look at this as an overall good thing within reason and use these days to my advantage for the long-term gains. Startup concerns. As NEO is an electric vehicle growth company, they don't actually have their own factory. This is something a lot of NEO investors seem to miss. I do think that they will actually have to own their own factory if they want to continue growing. They outsource almost everything and are essentially a marketing brand and distributor. They currently have a partnership with JAC Motors and recently announced that they are able to manufacture up to 5,000 vehicles per month. They released August delivery numbers just under 4,000, so for the time being, maybe the next month or two, they will not reach their maximum output capacity, but I do think that if they want to continue healthy growth, that they will need to consider building their own factory, spending some short-term capital, and then reaping the rewards for better margins in the medium and long-term future. This is not a major concern for me for the short term, as I do trust NEO's management, and I don't think NEO making their own factory within Hefei province, China, is out of the question in the short term. However, if they do reach production capacity, this would be a missed opportunity for the company. A Chinese company. So the last point I want to make is that when investing in a Chinese company, you need to be aware of the risks. Over 200 Chinese companies have been delisted by the SEC for fraudulent reporting. This has been an ongoing issue with much news and press notably arising recently out of luck and coffee in the past couple months and also ideonomics. Luck and coffee misled its investors with fraudulent numbers, attracting a ton of capital. However, it all ended up being essentially a lie and the stock absolutely plummeted.
Now, Neo, in my opinion, is not as high a risk when it comes to the numbers. They are building tangible products, they have a very high market capitalization now, and they are making great efforts to keep very transparent and easily digestible SEC filings for its investors. I am personally invested in Neo, and I would not be there if I thought the risk factor for fraudulent reporting was high. However, you need to come to your own conclusion and understand the risks and be willing to take the risks if you do invest in this company. They are definitely reaching a high level of credibility, but fraud cannot be ever fully extinguished. Anyways, everyone, thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. As I stated before, NEO is one of my favorite companies. I really believe in this company. I've been invested in them for a long time and will continue supporting and following this company with a very close eye. So make sure to hit that subscribe button for all NEO updates, other EV companies, IPOs, growth stocks, tech stocks, you name it, I'm doing it. Let me know what you think about NEO in the comments. Are you buying, holding, or selling? I really want to know. Let's have a discussion about it. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.